for whom the bell tolls. For anyone watching this at a later date, not live, please bear in mind this is a live stream tour, so you will hear me interacting with the people who are watching the tour live. So if you're watching at a later date on YouTube, you will not see the chat, okay? So if somebody asks me a question, I will try and repeat what they say, so it becomes a little bit clearer to you. I'm not talking to myself. Hello everybody who's watching. Say hello in the chat. Hello everyone who's watching. Does anyone recognise this building? That image is directly in front of us. Hello everyone. Susan, hello Susan. Kazooie, Michelle, Kerry. Anyone else? Cheryl. Baby! Dawn! Laura! Polly, hello everyone! How's life? In the fast lane. So, it's just like being in Edinburgh. It's really windy today. <laughs> Gusts of 39 miles per hour winds. <laughs> hello Cathy! Hello Diane! Christopher, how you doing buddy? Nice to hear from then, see ya. Look at this beautiful building I found at college here. Lovely, isn't it? Today I'm in Pamplona. Suzanne, how you doing? How's life? Welcome to Pamplona. In España, por favor. I just saw this building, I've just been having a walk about before. It's, um, it's not even that cold actually, uh, warm actually. It's only 16 degrees, 15 degrees Celsius. And the wind is actually making it quite cold. I went for a walk this morning to the coffee shop and I all had a t-shirt on and a very waterproof, like a light waterproof jacket and it was bloody cold. So I had to put a warmer jacket on, but look at this college, isn't it beautiful? I do like this tower here, it kind of likes remind me of like an American um, city for some reason. Certainly you see it in America. Uh, it's not in nice blue skies, it's, but it's not that warm. It's only about 50 Fahrenheit. It's not that warm. But yeah, this just reminds me of something like a movie in America or something like this. This incredible tower here, some kind of college. This is not going to be a historical fact kind of day today, because I only arrived in Pamplona yesterday, well, last evening. Yesterday evening I arrived in Pamplona. Um, and we just went to accommodation and got um, checked in and got some food. We had arrived in Madrid. We actually left house, my house in Edinburgh at 3 o'clock in the morning. There was a, a bus going to the airport at 3 o'clock. So I got up at 2 o'clock, had about 3 hours sleep. Got up at 3 o'clock and we didn't arrive at the hotel until about after 7 o'clock last night. <laughs> hey Polly, so Mike, there's a picture. Obviously Pamplona is very famous for the running of the bulls. Held here in July every year. Got cancelled during COVID, of course. But this is the bull ring where they all get slaughtered at the end. <laughs> Caroline, how's it going, everyone? I can't, I'm having problems seeing the screen because it's quite sunny. I can't see everyone who's there. So I can't see all the comments, by the way, because it's just it's too, the sun is shining too brightly on my screen, so I can hardly see. I've got my sunglasses on, but look here. Hi Linda! Lethargy, how's it going? I quite like this mirror. Bullfighting should be stopped. Yes, yeah, it is a controversial um, topic. I don't agree with it at all, to be honest. It's one of the most barbaric things I've ever seen. Um, plus, the bulls get tortured. Usually they get fed sleeping tablets. They're drugged as well. The, the bulls get drugged like with sleeping tablets. So then they saw off their, horn, their horns halfway through, some of them as well. Not all of them are dodgy, of course, but yeah, parts of Spain have banned uh, bullfighting. Like the Catalonians, they don't agree, but they think it's barbaric as well. Um, how's life, Cheryl and everyone? I can't see everyone. Oh, I can see a bit better now on the screen. I'm in shade. 
Yeah, so you can't really see much of the, the Plaza del Toros, the bull uh, ring, unfortunately. Um, nice, um, I was just lying on the grass here a little minute ago and just pop, looked up and seen this. I've only been here once before, very briefly. I was only here for one night when I walked to Camino before. You tend just to um, pass through a city. You have to, when you walk the Camino, you have to walk every day. Even if, if, even if it's only a few kilometres, you have to keep on moving. Unless you've got a bad injury, like a bad blister, you can ask to stay in the accommodation for a second night. But you tend to only stay in a place for one night and then you move on. You just keep on walking and walking and walking. So, yeah, I haven't actually started the Camino de Santiago. I'm starting it tomorrow morning. It's better when I'm in the shaded area, I can see. Um, yeah, when I'm in the bright sunshine, I can't see. So, 100 year anniversary here. Plaza in 2022, Plaza de Toros. Pamplona, Eruña. So it's because I say it's quite cold in the shade. It's not, um, it's not the warmest place. Had a quick look about. Went to visit the cathedral, had some food and so on. We're staying about 30 minutes away, walk from the centre. I'm doing this with my son, who's 22, same age as myself. <laughs> um, so I might get lost on this tour. <laughs> I've only just been to this bit once before, so uh, hopefully I can find my way back okay into the old town area of the, the centre of the, the Pamplona, the old town. Some of it's like uh, just outside the centre, it's pretty, I would say it's quite a boring place to be honest. It's one of the most um, salubrious of looking places outside the centre. It's just like where I'm staying, it's just residential blocks and hotels. It's not very nice looking. Sandy, how's it going? Um, but yeah, once I come into the city centre, we just walked into, we were going to get a taxi and I went on Google Maps and it just says um, 30, 32 minute walk, so we just walked here. So this is quite a good thing on the zebra crossings, they've got timers on the lights, see here? So I'll just do this without getting knocked down. <laughs> Look. So it tells you how long you've got to wait for the green man coming, 30 seconds. 29. Pretty good, eh? One on the other side as well. Good morning, everyone. Polly, hi. I'm just going to go back into the old town now. I was just looking, like, I had a walk about. Obviously, just trying to get my bearings, because we're starting the Camino tomorrow. The Camino de Santiago passes through the centre here, of course. I'll show you the signs, how you know, um, when you're on the walk in the Camino. Basically, the Camino starts in France, in St. jean pierre de Point. If you want to watch a movie called The Way, it's a good movie actually, quite a good representation of the, um, the Camino. It's not 100% accurate, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's not bad, you know. So these are the streets where the, the running of the bulls take place down here. Obviously held in June, made famous by Hemingway famously of course. But yeah, it's um, very controversial. Population of... Um, yeah, this is one of the main streets the bulls come running down to end up in the, the, the bull ring here, up here. Usually they're running herds of six, at the most ten. So there's a peregrino there. Somebody who walks the Camino is a peregrino, a pilgrim. And you can tell because they're usually carrying a scallop shell, which is a sign of the, the, uh, the Camino. Because historically, back in the olden days, you would use your scallop shell to eat. And here's the typical uniform. There we are. Hello, Lynn. Ronnie. Yeah, quite good to this. So this is what they wear. Obviously the, the festival is dedicated to Saint, Saint Farmen. And the red is to do with the blood. He famously became a martyr. We get his head chopped off. He was decapitated. So they wear the the, the, bull, the bull runners. Um, they're usually uncastrated bulls as well. The bull runners tend to wear this. Um, hello, Caroline. How's everyone doing today? If I haven't said hello, it's because I haven't seen you, by the way. I'm not ignoring you. So obviously it's quite tourist as well. This is one of the main streets, the bulls, they put fences up, obviously, but I mean, I would never come and see that, you know, and plus the crowds are too busy, and too many people for my liking, but the, um, see on the Camino now, on the Camino now, people have got Google Maps, <laughs> this thing, I'll show you, we're not on the Camino, there's a, a woman who's walking the Camino, but she's not actually on the Camino, the Camino's further down here at the bottom. 
And, but yeah, imagine if you, because imagine the, the population probably doubles during the running of the bulls and all the people who live here, they must be very popular. <laughs> or they must, the, the locals probably rent out their flats actually when the bull running's on because um, yeah, it's like Edinburgh and the festival in July, isn't it? in August, you know, you, it's so busy and overcrowded. Um, you tend to like avoid the area if possible. So obviously they put fences up to sort of corral the bulls down one way. Yeah, they run between, it's usually, it's usually herds of six at least at a time, a time, but up to, up to ten bulls can run as well. And usually they're, um, usually they're either castrated or uncastrated steers, or, un, or castrated bulls. The main bulls are obviously, they've not been castrated yet. And then they get, they end up in the bull ring. Festival's on for just over a week. And then they end up in the bull ring getting killed in the in the bull ring after getting tortured. Some parts of Spain they put uh, their, their horns on fire as well. I mean they're doing it. And the people, the runners, the runners who take part, they tend to see them running and they have a, a newspaper to try and um, scare away the, the bull. But every year, quite a few people get injured as well. Been a few deaths. There's not been a death for a few years, but there's a, one of the areas where people get crushed as well, so because the crowds are so big. Lo siento, no hablar mucho español es posible, hablamos inglés, por favor. Me, me llamo es de Paul. <laughs> Do not touch the bull. So yes, I can speak very basic. I, when I lived in Spain, I was getting um, Spanish lessons. <laughs> I've got pictures of people getting gored with the bulls. That's obviously been photoshopped, I think. <coughs> See what we've got a new rolled up newspaper. Here. I think that's been photoshopped at. But I did see some yeah, that's been definitely been photoshopped, I think. I did see some photographs earlier. <laughs> of people of people who do get gored. About fifty people every festival gets gored, I think. Or get injured, some end up in hospital. Um, obviously they get crushed and <coughs> excuse me my asthma has been quite bad it's, Spain's a very um, smoking country and um, yeah everywhere people smoke. they've got a really high population who, percentage of the population who smoke and for some reason it just catches my throat and makes me cough quite a lot but obviously it's very touristy here you know Set up for the the running of the bulls. Two weeks, uh, the week before it actually is the best time to come. I said that to my son today. I says, "Oh, I'm not going to go to the bull festival, but we should come a few days before it because they have a protest they're running a, a naked festival. People march through the streets naked and protest." Oh. <laughs> that noise was coming from a bike. That music there. Yeah. And for some reason I've been sneezing all morning as well. I haven't got a cold or nothing, but I've been sneezing all morning. So I have got some uh, hay fever tablets for me, so... Yeah, I think I've got too much stuff in my bag as well. My bag's really heavy. It's definitely a lot heavier than my... You know, you have to carry your own luggage. Well, you don't have to, but most people choose, choose to carry their own luggage. It's only a, ba a, a rucksack, you know. Um, where the heck was I? Uh, I'm on the Camino here. Ah, see here. So when you're walking the Camino, yeah, naked protest. Look, so you see the scallop shell and the arrow, the yellow arrow. That was um, a Roman Catholic priest that did that, actually. Um, I think it was back in, I remember, right back in the 1950s. And then you'll see shells see signs on the... Pero... Sorry. Jesus God, man, are you dancing or you asking? <laughs> just going to take you up this way first and then come back. I'm just going to show you the... Because this, this is me now on the Camino. So this is... I'm now on the Camino. And... Uh, so again here, on the wall there, the arrow's pointing to go this way. So every time there's a junction, there'll be an arrow or a shell on the floor telling you where to go. Okay, so here it's here. So the Camino is picked up here again. So I'll try and get close to this here on the floor. 
So I'm only walking from Pamplona. Normally you start in France and it's 800 kilometres, 500 miles. But I've only got, I've not got enough time. I've only got, I might not even complete the whole Camino this time. So again, so you see there, another shell there. And that's, you know, but the thing is, you wouldn't have to really, once you're on a straight road, and then you know it's the Camino until you get to a junction. So then when you get to the junction, there'll be another sign or the shells will move direction and they'll tell you. So it's not no, it's not really a problem on the Camino, but it can be a problem in busy um, cities. I got lost one side on it 10 years ago as well, the Camino. So again here, there's a shell there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you see them going ahead of you, so you know you're going to bear to the right here. There's another one down here. Then it continues on that road. But look at this beautiful building here. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Look at that. This is a Plaza de Constitorial. Look at that. Look at the sculptures, the architecture. Very different still of architecture, I would say, here. Very different. A lot of places are closed on this Sunday. We'll take you into hopefully we'll hopefully finish a tour in the cathedral. I'm not sure what the signal is going to be like, but um, I did have a signal earlier on when I went to the cathedral. So, so up here, this was I was here earlier on. It was really busy. So you can see the shells are here. Okay, so again here. So there's markers all the way through. Once you get out of the cities, it's um, so again you know you're going here. So this is what you've got. I got lost. I can't remember what city it was. It Ponferrada or somewhere last year. There's a really busy city, and I got lost. The, the scallop shells, the markers just disappeared, <laughs> and I was like, ah, where the hell? So they're continuing up there straight ahead, and then the bears left, and that's the basic thing, you know. So I found this um, cathedral earlier, no, but you can't get a a good picture of it. There's a really old ancient church here. Nice sign there. Do you recommend flying to a certain location and taking trains? Well, see, the best, most people start on the French route. There's different routes on the Camino de Santiago. There's lots of different routes. There's the English route, the, per the Portuguese route, the French route. It comes from, Mal um, from Malaga as well. So there's lots of different ways you can walk. About 200, 250,000 people walk it every year, unless it's a holy year of St. James, and then that doubles. So you don't want to walk the Camino on a holy year dedicated to St. James, okay? Because that's the worst time to do it. Uh, um, I would only recommend doing it in April, May, or September. Oh, I don't think that car's supposed to be here. Oh. I think that car's lost. I don't think you'd be supposed to be driving through here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, St. John Pierre de Port is the most um, popular place for the people to start the Camino. Um, and that's 800 kilometres or 500 miles. Um, but that's the worst part of the Camino, in my opinion. It's, you've got to go through the Pyrenees. There's actually two routes you can go. You go through the, the Pyrenees. And it can be quite dangerous, actually. One or two people lose their lives every year. But it's generally very safe as well. The last time I did it was... Um, Lots and lots of single ladies, uh, lots of lesbians actually, lots of like uh, middle-aged um, lesbians do it on their own. It's um, quite fasc fascinating actually because it's very safe. I've only done it once before, 10 years ago actually, just funny enough, I it's a 10 year anniversary. I wasn't going to do it, I'd been contemplating it last year and I wasn't going to do a holiday, take a holiday because, um, because I started my own business, you know. I invested all my money in my business instead, but the weather has been just so bad, I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so look at this. The world's, look, I was in here earlier on, the world's best bocadillo. A bocadillo is a baguette, £5.50. Five and look at, look at all the ham on. Spain is obviously very famous for ham on. Ham on. Especially the, the pigs fed on the black acorns. Lots of lovely meat. You can see them hanging up here. See that? Look at that. Beautiful. This is an acquired taste here. But look at this. Look at it, it's expensive. So 21 euros 90 for this here. 
be some cheesy as well. That's what I like about the Camino, you walk through different regions, you know. Oh, that, look at this here. We can really slice it up. Beautiful. Yeah. So when I lived in Spain before, they could smoke in the bars. And they have them hanging in the bars. They have these big legs of the pig hanging in the bars. And all the bars were fully smoke. So I found that was bizarre. So you buy a leg of that ham. You can buy them in Lidl's at Christmas time, but they're not as good as this stuff here, you know. You actually see them in Lidl's for about £80. But you may have a big family, you know. But they don't refrigerate them. Because of the way they're cured, they're not refrigerated. It's weird, man. I could not eat it. I was vegetarian when I lived in Spain. I had to eat fish. Because at that point, in 2006, 2005, they did not have very many vegetarian restaurants there. And um, yeah, so I, I ended up having to eat fish. Or I couldn't survive. And I never ever tried. There was all this lovely ham on there. And I never ever tried it. And so... I think it was the time I did the Camino, I can't remember, I did try it at some point anyway, but it can be quite chewy, I don't like chewy stuff, you know, I don't like octopus, octopus, squid, stuff like that, anything chewy, and yes, with the ham and the, um, I can't take it if it's, I buy it now and again, but I can't take it if it's too chewy, you know, so look here, <laughs> look at this bull I seen earlier on, look, no touch of a bowl, can you see that out of the sunlight? <laughs> it's mental, man. Eh? There was big demonstrations going on earlier on. There was a march for um, Palestine. And, um, what is it? Um, yeah, what was yeah. oh, there, was a, there was a Catholic thing going on. I wasn't sure what was going on. There was a kind of Catholic thing going on. Um, and then this band just started, these guys dressed up as something started coming down here earlier on. And. Uh, so it's quieting down now. This is really busy. When I was here earlier on, a couple of hours ago, it was really busy. So it just shows you the Spanish might be all have a way. Because what time is it now? It's three o'clock here. Maybe a wee visiting family and so on. But look, all these little streets, imagine how much they make money um, during the tourist season when the bull running's on, you know. Populations, I think, nearly 300,000 people in Pamplona. It's not that big. Um, the, you stay in, the, you've got a choice of accommodation, okay? Um, so the vast majority majority of people play in places, stay in places that are called albergs. And an alberg is kind of like a dorm, a dormitory. So there could be anything from up to two people to over 100 people staying in the same room. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay in the albergs this time. I did stay in the albergs the last time, but can you imagine, I never slept for a week, the first week I went there, in fact, I've just walked past it, I think I was going to show you this, I've just, um, yeah, for the first week, when the last time I did the community, I did not sleep, and I met this lady who had divorced her husband, and um, she gave me wax earplugs, wax earplugs, and I slept like a baby. Because you could imagine sleeping in a dormitory, you've got a hundred Dutch and German and English guys. Oh, it must be further up. I thought there was a, an alberg. Oh, it's not fossil up here. Yeah, you could be, you know, people, people have been eating garlic sausage, they're farting, snoring, stinking. People get up at five o'clock in the morning and leave. Obviously, people get up during the night to go to the toilet as well. So, yes, it's um, um, wax earplugs. After your footwear, Okay, the most important thing to wear to, on the Camino is the, your footwear. But the second most important thing to take is um, wax earplugs. <laughs> Are you going to be scheduling uh, YouTube tours? I'll be doing a combination. Good question, Diane, actually. Yeah, because uh, here I got, I got my Pilgrim passport here earlier on. So you need to get a Pilgrim's passport, okay? Your credit NCL. So see here? Yeah, so I'll be doing a, because I don't know where I'll be, I'm thinking of putting on two tours a day, something like that. Maybe one about lunchtime, one um, late afternoon. So I'll maybe schedule them all for the same time for the next two weeks. And then see how we go. Yeah, see the scallop shell is a sign of the, of the cross of St. James. So people get them when you tie them to your bags as well. It's a sign of a pilgrim. Um, so you can just buy everything you want here. Um, they, they reckon your rucksack, okay? should not be any heavier than 10% of your body weight. Um, and mine's is more than 
The gimbal's quite heavy, actually. So there's some peregrinos here, Pilgrim, there's peregrinos. Um, hello, live stream, um, who's this? Events. Oh, hi there, I don't know who that is. If it's uh, Lynette or Lynn. I like, I like, yeah, I'm going to join that live stream. That's, um, that's um, you know, quite a good idea I've got there. I'm just not bloody educated enough on all this technology stuff, man. Um, is there a language challenge there, or is English acceptable? Uh, no, most people on the Camino um, speak um, English. Obviously, you've got Google Translate now. You can just download an app. Before you come, download an app, um, Translate, and you can just speak into that. And, but yeah, now most people in the communities, especially in the accommodation, they um, speak um, English. And lots of Americans do it, you know what I mean? So see here, so you've got a sign, Jesus y Maria, and it's got a bed symbol and the pilgrim shell symbol with an arrow. So that tells you there's a, um, an alberg. So as I said, the albergs are the basic accommodation. You get municipal ones. The cheapest ones are the municipal ones, and that means the albergs are owned by the local authority. The local council own the albergs. And you could get them as, for as little as five euros for one night. So basically five euros for one night, up to possibly 20 euros for the private albergs. So here is the alberg here. So again, it's got the, the sign of the shell above the door. It's easy, Paul. We can do it in no time. As I see, as I say, man, I get just gets confused with it all. So you see here, Alberg, <coughs> the Peregrinos, the Pilgrims, Pilgrims Hostel. So we've got different languages here. Actually, looks Chinese, Mandarin. Is that French, English, Spanish? <coughs> and you have to have a passport to stay in the Albergs. You need to get your Pilgrims passport. Okay. So this is quite a posh looking one. This looks quite a big one actually. Um, so I'll show you the passport. One second, everyone. So again, you see the arrow on the wall. So that's taking you back onto the Camino here. Oh, is that Japanese? Sorry, I thought it was Mandarin. Because we, <laughs> yeah. In fact, the last time I've done it, I got lost in Ponferrada or somewhere. Right, I got lost in one of the cities. The scallop shells just disappeared, and I was so stressed. And I found this Japanese lady crying. She was just sitting on a, a, a bunch of steps crying. And I was like, that's ah, so I tried to help her. And she was so stressed, she actually broke down and cried. And I said, look, I says, I will try and help you. I says, I will call you a taxi and we'll get the taxi to take you back to the Camino, to put you onto the Camino. Oh, thank you so much. Can you do that? I says, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the poor lady, I got her called a taxi. And um, the poor lady got in the taxi and the taxi driver took her back to get, to get her back onto the Camino, you know, just outside the main city. So it was much, uh, it was much better for us. Oh, the cathedral closed. Oh, you're joking, the cathedral's closed. They must close it. Oh, I was going to take us inside the cathedral. I was in here earlier on. Why is the cathedral closed? Yeah, it was such a shame for the lady. She was so upset. I never ever saw her again, I don't think. <laughs> it's quite bizarre when you're walking the Camino. This is the main pump, Pamplona Cathedral here. Some of it dates back to the 14th and 15th century, but the facade is mostly 18, 1799, there about. Um, but yeah, it's £5 to get into the cathedral, or it's £3 if you're a pilgrim. <laughs> so it's quite good, but it was, it was free on a Sunday, so we went in there earlier for a, a little look about, so I was hoping to go in there. So here's another um, Camino here, another Alberg here. So they've got signs of A for Alberg. Ah, they're closed for siesta. Oh well, well no, the next time don't do organise the tour at three o'clock. <laughs> so this is the Plaza Cathedral, Alberg. I keep on forgetting I'm in Spain, you know, I lived here. Yeah, especially on a Sunday. Most of the supermarkets don't close, eh, don't open on a Sunday either. It can be quite frustrating actually when you're here. Um, if you arrive on a Sunday. So you have to go to the shop, so um, obviously because of the 100 millimetre, you know, like 100 millilitres on your... At least I'm not got an ambulance on my tour. <laughs> At least I'm not got an ambulance. I usually have an ambulance every time I do a tour. 
it's a countdown to when the first ambulance arrives. <laughs> um, so yeah. Oh, somebody just smashed a glass there. The bells, the bells. Yeah, I had a quick look in there earlier on. I spent about 35 minutes in there earlier on, actually. It's quite nice inside. I might be able to do a tour there, because I'm actually starting in the Camino tomorrow morning, so... Um, I'll see if I can do a tour tomorrow morning from in... in the, I'll, I'll do a tour of inside the cathedral. If I'd known it was going to close, I would have filmed it. But I didn't know it was going to close. Which is a schoolboy error, of course, because... Um, you know, I've lived here. <laughs> I know the Spanish like the siestas, but the thing is, right, this is what annoys me about Spain. I'm on a rant. I'm, I'm going to go on a rant, everyone. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so living in Spain can be very frustrating. Ding, ding. <laughs> um, uh, you know, because it's not so bad now. They are getting more modernised in the EU, but yeah, it does very much have a tradition of mañana, mañana. You know, ah, tomorrow will do. Tomorrow we'll do, you know. Um, yeah, not much down here. I've not been down here, but yeah, yeah, you can see parts of the older parts of the cathedral actually. It's a swear doggy little drinking out the fountain here. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants any advice or help on the Camino, if you're not already a friend on Facebook, add me as a friend. So you can see parts of the older, the older stonework here, and it goes into the more modern stuff. Yeah, if anybody wants to. Um, have any information or ask any questions about the Camino de Santiago, just um, give me a message or ask me a question, you know, if I can help you. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but because, um, yeah, as I say, it's very safe for females to do the Camino. Uh, I met so many people, um, single ladies or the ladies who have been divorced or ladies, I met a lady who had an epiphany. She discovered after like 35 years of marriage, she was gay. <laughs> dumped her husband and turned gay. My cousin done this very same thing actually. Um, in her probably in her late thirties, forties, she had an, an epiphany. Um, yeah, she had been married twice, had five children, and then decided she was gay. And she lived in a very small village actually, in Yorkshire. My, my family are mostly English, and um, she, she lived in a very small village in uh, in Yorkshire called Hipperome. Epperome, near the brick house, and yes, yeah, she she got a girlfriend and all that. It was only a phase, I think, she was going through because a couple of years later she said she wasn't gay anymore, and then went back to um, men again. So, but yeah, I met this lady in the Camino last year from New Zealand, and you meet people and they tell you their life stories, you know. And I met this lady; she just started walking beside me, and oh, she told me her whole life story about why she was here why she was doing the Camino, um, her husband was a bastard, and so on, and all this and all that, complaining about everything, and um, oh, well, she ranted on, she, like she was venting, you know, for like 45 minutes at me, and then so we parted, you always meet somebody and then you part your ways, and then a couple of days later I bumped into the same lady again, right, and she's not recognised me, and she started telling me her whole story again. <laughs> She started telling all the same stuff she had told me two days before. She started telling me again. And I'm like, Jesus, how? So you've already told me this, you know? A bit like Palestine flags on the big here. There's one, two up there, another one there. Obviously, this is the Basque region, see the Basque flag? These the Basque have got a separatist movement as well. Um, a lot of left wing people, obviously, in Pamplona. Get the lovely Spanish bar. See when you, you see a rustic looking Spanish bar, that's the place to go, especially if there's old people sitting there. Um, and yeah, look everywhere you go, Palestine flags. It's perhaps just because it's the same colour as the Basque flag as well, because the Basque flag is in the shape of the Union flag, you know the British flag? But the cross is white, the diagonal sections are green and, and the fill in bits are red. Um, so you can see here they want a republic as well, it is a very um, left wing more flags up there. Um, it's a very left-wing area, I would say. Um, they had a Basque separatist movement called ETA. Nice mural there. See that again? We're looking at spending about six weeks in Spain. Who's that? Who's live stream? Is that Lynn or Lynette? 
I'm not sure who your live stream is, but you're looking about spending about six weeks in Spain from August. Oh, August is not a very good time to go to Spain, man. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to finish the Camino on this occasion. I've got work commitments, of course. Is that Marconi? Is it Lynn? All right, Lynn, how you doing? So you're coming back to Spain and, um, for six weeks, are you, in August? As I say, I tend to avoid them um, anywhere in August. Um, September, yes, but September's a good time to come to Spain. Um, but yeah, August is so hot. When I lived here before, I got really sick in August. A heat wave blew in from Africa and so on. You see a couple of pilgrims here. You see them all the walking poles. That's what I'm debating, getting a... Um, a set of walking poles. The last time I walked the Camino, I just used one walking stick, you know, a big wooden, a big wooden walking pole. I just used that. Um, but because I've got my back problems and I'm a bit older now, um, I'm thinking of getting walking poles, two of them. So I'm not sure I'm going to try and suss it out. Yeah, because it's good for going up hills and down hills, having extra support, you know. <laughs> walking poles, but you get real annoyed by the noises, especially, it's alright in the, outside the cities, but if you're walking through the, the, um, the cities, all you hear is click, 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 you know the stamping of the, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to show you this square up here, um, yeah, you get to, you, certain things begin to annoy you, <laughs> the worst part of the Camino, right, is the last hundred kilometres from Saria, Saria, um, because to get your certificate right at the end of the Camino, you get a certificate, and this certificate allows you to get a free pass into heaven. So when you meet the, your death at some point in your life, which you will, um, all you do is take your certificate with you, and on the pearly gates, St. Peter the First Pope will be there, uh, is your name on the list? So you just say, eh, eh, excuse me, Peter, I've, uh, I've walked the Camino, I've got a certificate. So you just hand them that, and then you get into heaven for free. You don't have to go to your purgatory. <laughs> End of August and it's up north. Oh, you're in Vietnam just now. Well, I mean, the north of Spain, it can still be quite hot. I mean, this is, we're obviously in the north of Spain just now, of course. Um, yeah, because I done it, last time I done it, I done it, this is now April. Um, the last time I done it was in May. And when I got to Galicia, this is in the, the far north, where Sean O'Rourke is, tour guide Sean, lives around that area. Um, once I got to Galicia, it was colder in Scotland, it was like three degrees Celsius. It rained non-stop for a week. <laughs> oh, all the smokers here, man. Gee whiz. Um, so yeah, it can be quite cold in the north, but it can be quite hot as well. Put something rubber on the end. <laughs> I could take that in one or two ways there, you know. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. You know me by now. If you don't know me by now. I believe I got a few complaints the other day about my controversial post about the rapture. People should know me by now. I'm a wind-up merchant. I like to wind people up, you know. This is a Plaza del Castillo. The plaza of the castle, the castle square. Nice architecture. Nice, nice. I don't know if I'd like to live in this city, but, you know, I think it'd be too busy come August, uh, come the festival in July. That's our hotel there. It's uh, quite, it's quite a like this. I mean, it's not too bad here, you know. It's not my favourite place in Spain, I would say, Pamplona. It's nice, but I'm not trying to bring it down or nothing like that. As I say, I've not got time to much spend much time here. I've only passed through before. I was only here for a... I think the last time I was here, I was arrived at like half past three in the afternoon. Went to the alberg, got showered. When you're walking the Camino, your best, you don't have a shower in the morning before you leave. Right? If you're going to walk the Camino, you do not have a shower in the morning. Because that, fa that softens up your feet. It, what did I just say there? It softens your feet, right? So you're more likely to get blisters if you um, have a shower in the morning. So what you do in the Camino, you get into a routine because you only take three pairs of socks, three pairs of pants, two t-shirts, a jumper, a jacket, waterproofs, pair of shorts, pair of sandals, 
and a pair of walking boots or shoes. That's all you take on the Camino. Plus your first aid kit. You take a small, very basic first aid kit. Uh, take blister cream, blister plasters, blister plasters. Your technology, a charging, a battery charger for your phone. Um, any tech, I wouldn't bring books. Books are heavy, as I say. You want to be carrying no more than 10% of your body weight. You only need a 30 litre ba backpack. I actually bought a 40 litre one and it's slightly too big. But for some reason, I was only supposed to bring three pairs of boxer shorts, right? And I was like that yesterday. Why is it? Because we walked around Madrid for a few hours. And I was like, why is my bag so heavy? And when I got back to the hotel, when we, got, when we arrived at the accommodation last night, I brought five pairs of boxer shorts for some reason. And another, an extra t-shirt, three pairs of t-shirts. I was only supposed to bring two. Um, and, uh, yeah, obviously I've got my gimbal and the tripod is quite heavy, you know. So I've got too much stuff. Yeah, because we arrived in Madrid yesterday about... Whoa! <laughs> Big bubbles here. See the wee boy? See these children here? I've got a funny feeling I'm going to meet somebody who I know in this um, this um, place. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Do you have heavy boxer shorts? I know it's not that, but I've got five of them. I only need three. And plus I've got uh, an extra t-shirt. I've got my gimbal. I reckon my bag is about nine kilos. Uh, I reckon it's about nine kilos, which is too heavy for me, you know. I've lost a bit of weight. I've lost about a stone in weight in the last month. Um, yeah, I've not been having such a good time recently, but anyway, that's a subject for another day. I nearly got hit with depression. Well, I was depressed, actually. I had to fight it. I was fighting really hard to beat the depression again, you know. I got myself into a dark space. Um, but I'm alright. I'm getting there, you know what I mean? Life is full of highs and full of lows. Life is like a box of chocolates, as Forrest Gump said. You never know what you're going to get until you open them. And life's like that, it's full of highs, full of lows, ups and downs. One step forward, three steps back, ten steps forward, eight steps back. And then sometimes you go back and back and back. <laughs> and that's what gets annoying. Um, so yeah, life is pretty crap sometimes, but anyway. Sometimes you have to struggle on, fight through it. Come out the other side, Santander Bank there as well. It's a very different style of architecture, isn't it? It's quite a... A strange, um, you know, the juxtaposition of the old and the new, it's quite... As I say, I'm not... Uh, remember Fran I don't know if Francis... Remember we had a tour guide in uh, Pamplona, Francis? I don't know if he's still doing the virtual tours. Does anyone know if Francis is still doing them? I can't see this. As well as I'm in the sun, that's interesting. I'm not carrying more than 10%. If an overpacker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've definitely got. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to lighten my backpack because the thing is, you've got to get. You've got to get toiletries as well. And as we know, toiletries come in big, huge bottles. A liter of um, liquid weighs a kilo. Weighs a kilo. So one liter is a kilo. So you have to carry um, at least seven hundred and fifty ml of water with you. And there's fountains all the way along the Camino. There's also a fountain, believe it or not, on the Camino where they get free red wine. Yep, there's a, a, a monk's monastery who make red wine. And every day they fill up the fountain with the red wine. So if you arrive there in the morning, you go straight to the fountain and fill up all your water bottles with red wine. Free of charge. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Get this little thing here. <laughs> Hi, pal. Uh, yeah, so you need to take water with you, so, as I say, a litre is a kilo, so you have all your toiletries. A lot of guys tend not to shave on the Camino as well. I did bring razor. I've not bought, um, because all the shops are closed today, I didn't bring any, um, I haven't bought any shampoo. I arrived at the hotel last night, right, it's quite um, strange. It's the first time I've stayed in a hotel, it's not got a TV set. It never had a glass. There wasn't even a glass for your gear. Um, no TV. I was like, a hotel with no TV. Because there's football on Barcelona playing Real Madrid tonight. Big game in Spain. Real Madrid v Barcelona tonight, you know. 
Um, I can hardly see them. Ah, these camel backpacks. One of those camel. I don't know what a camel backpack is, to be honest. Looks. I know there was a. Who was it from um, Pamplona? Oh, he's doing cooking tours, is he? I can hardly see because the sun's shining on my phone. I've got my sunglasses on. I need to wear. I've got sensitive eyes. So I need to wear sunglasses um, when it's sunny. So I can't see. I've got my sunglasses. They're prescription sunglasses, so I can't hardly see the screen when I'm in full sunshine. I have to go into a shaded area. So hopefully, are you all able to understand me better now? I am using my posh voice. Um, the problem is I have developed a tour guide voice because of my tours on the coaches. A lot of the Americans could not understand a single word I was saying. So it took me six years to develop a tour guide voice. The first time I tried it last year doing a virtual tour, everyone was asking me, what is wrong with you, Paul? Why are you speaking like that? Are you okay? <laughs> People were not used to hearing me speaking properly. Um, and you can tell I'm not speaking too much Scottish today because I'm not passionate like I do get about, you know, if I'm doing a tour about Mary Queen of Scots or Scottish independence, I get very passionate and my pace of speaking picks up quite, uh, picks up the pace, shall we say. And uh, yes, but obviously I'm not as passionate about Pamplona as I am about Mary Queen of Scots. Of course. Lots of Scottish connections here, of course. Uh, in fact, oh. I got a badge, I got a couple of badges today. Who's this dude here? Let's see, I'll get a photoshop of this uh, dude here, man. Looks like some king. Or, they have lots of um, statues of kings and obviously like local mayors and stuff like that. So I don't know who this dude is. Carlos, ah, oh, King Carlos, ah, oh, yeah. Carlos III, he's, um, he, I was hoping to show you his statue and the, there's a marble statue dating back to the 15th century in the cathedral with him and his wife. So Carlos, Carlos III must have been a very important king in Spain or in this part of the, the world. Spain is um, workers as well. <laughs> Local authority workers. Um, <coughs> let's see if I can get in the shade to see that question. Um, it's a camel pack that one has built in water and you're able to drink. I've never used one. I know people do use them and they say they've not had a problem with them. Whether or not I would recommend them, I don't think I would, but I've never used one, so I cannot give you an honest opinion, to be fair, but I've never used them. Um, so I don't know how easy they would... Because as, walk, as you're walking along the Camino, you've got like um, public fountains, so you fill up your bottles from the public fountains. So I'm not sure what it's like to fill a... Um, a rucksack that's got an inbuilt um, dehydration system, shall we say. Um, so I couldn't honestly give an opinion on that. I have seen people who have them. Um, what I would do is I would ask somebody who has used one, would you use it again? And see what they say. But yeah, I don't know about that. I've just had a normal backpack. I haven't brought a sleeping bag. I don't intend to sleep in albergs. So when you sleep in an alberg, you have to carry your own um, sleeping bag. You have to bring your own sleeping bag. But if you stay in hostels or hotels, they tend to have um, um, duvets, you know. Um, but the last time just the last time I was doing the Camino, I injured my back the week before I was going. And I had to drastically reduce the number of um, items I was carrying in my, my backpack. I was intending to take a sleeping bag, but because I injured my back the week before I left, I decided to leave my sleeping bag. And so when I arrived in the Albergs, I just asked for a blanket. Um, so some people just take a sleeping bag liner. So you know, you just go in, it's like a sleeping bag liner. So you just go in that and then ask for a blanket to see if you carry a sleeping bag. But that's only if you're going to stay in the Albergs, okay? Um, is that? I'm missing that there. I use Camelback a lot because it's less effort than use the straw than getting a bottle in my bag. Yeah, it looked quite convenient. I'm missing some of the comments actually. Big game at hand and all, oh, yeah, Rangers be hearts, isn't it? 
Yeah, well, listen, I was actually, we were actually listening to the Celtic and Aberdeen game on the train yesterday going from um, Madrid to Pamplona. So we arrived in Madrid just after, about round about 10 o'clock, and the train to Pamplona wasn't until 10 to 3, and we were trying to find some cannabis. So in Spain, cannabis is semi-legal, they have cannabis clubs, you have to become a member of the cannabis club, and then you can, then you can go and buy cannabis. So yes, yeah, so we've spent a few hours walking about Madrid looking for a cannabis club, and we went to one that turned out it was only only sold CBD. <laughs> we walked two miles to it and only sold and with a backpack on and only sold CBD. So as you can imagine, my language was was quite fruity on that day, <laughs> and uh, eventually we found one anyway. And so then that was about half past one. So then we had to make our way back to the train. The tr- the, the bus, the train station. So to get to from Madrid to the airport to the train station, we had to take a bus, which was five euros. They turn up every 15 minutes. And then we um, we just walked back to the train station. And once we got to the train station, but I was trying to find out where the train was going from. That was quite hard. It took us about 20 minutes to find out where the train was going from. So that was a bit of a pain in the butt. Nobody... Um, they kept on saying there's in different directions and all that. Eventually, I found it with like 15 minutes. In fact, we went into, we, we, we actually had to go put your luggage through security in the train station, which I was quite surprised about. I think because we were going long distance from Madrid to Pamplona, we had to put our luggage through security check. And I was like, I've got cannabis in my bag. And I'm like, oh no, I'm going to get arrested in Spain. <laughs> uh, but I never got arrested. And uh, yeah, so we got a beer. There was a cafe at the train station where we got to the right platform and then um, got a couple of beers and then the train turned up. So we just took the cans of beer on the train. So it wasn't too bad. That took just under three and a half hours on the train. It wasn't a bullet train. They have the um, they have the bullet trains in Spain that go about 150 miles an hour or something like that. Um, but our train wasn't like that. But it had lovely food on it actually. It had lovely food. And I had a bag of crisps, olive oil crisps, by the way. Ah, oh, beautiful crisps. They're the best chips. You know the crisps, chips, whatever you call them. We had some of these olive oil crisps, chips, and they were beautiful. Oh, look, here's a cannabis shop here. So you can buy CBD from the shop, obviously, in Spain. CBD's legal here. So look, I love cannabis. Natural products, but it's all CBD. So to buy marijuana, Mary Jane, whatever... Cannabis, you have to join the weed clubs. You can't see because of the reflections on the window. <laughs> Hola, buenos dias, que pasa, hombre? Que tal? <laughs> I've been teaching my son very basic Spanish. My son's away, <laughs> this is quite funny, my son's away in a bus to try and find a river. My son loves rivers. I'm doing this Camino with my son, and he loves rivers. <laughs> so he's, he's away to find a river. So he said, oh, I can get a bus 19, you know. I was like, right, on you go and get the bus then. So I said, I'll meet him back at the cathedral at, um, at uh, four o'clock. <laughs> so let's go and see the cathedral if he's going to make it back. I don't think he will. It's five to four. Let's go and see. Olive oil crisps are amazing. Swap rucksacks with your son. <laughs> ah, he's already offered to take some of my stuff. You know, my son's a, my son works in construction. He's 22 year old, you know. Um, so yeah, he's going to... Well, he's, he's carrying my gimbal, actually, because the gimbal and the tripod thing's quite heavy. Probably about a couple of kilos, actually. Um, so my son's been carrying uh, my gimbal for me. So that's quite good. So yeah, I'm going to ditch some of the stuff from my rucksack and um, give some things to my son, you know, and hopefully my backpacker, because I won't be able to do it. Simple as that. I just know I won't be able to do it. I'm just not physically capable. Um, I've done manual work for over 30 years. You know, I was a maintenance engineer. And um, yeah, my days of doing manual work is over. So yeah, I'm not um, I'm not as fit or as young as I used to be, unfortunately. So my son will be taking some of my stuff with him. Thankfully, that's why I brought him along. <laughs> oh, he couldn't. My son's 22, and I thought mother son Dean's going to Germany this year, and he's away. In fact, mother son Dean's away. Oh, I got him a holiday. Well, I gave my other son, Dean, and his beautiful fiance Amy, wonderful mother, best mother going, their lovely wee daughter, Ariel. So I gave them some money at Christmas time. 
to book a wee holiday, so we're going away in the end of April for a wee holiday. And Jamie's determined, my son Jamie's determined to go travelling. What's this man? Street, street cleaner. This guy, I wonder what that noise was. Ah, they see their things there. You know what I mean? These things here. With the inbuilt water system. Yeah, I don't know if I would use that, to be honest. You don't need to bring a headlamp. See them? Waste the time. This man. I've not got an ambulance, but I've got a street cleaner. They don't bring a headlight, a head torch with you, because all your phones have got a torch on them. So just bring your phone with a torch. The torch, use the torch on your phone. No point in bringing it up. It's just extra weight. It's just a noisy machine, that. Jesus, holy moly. There's a flag there. I loads of flags about. I remember, I can't remember what city I was in the last time. There was lots of, um, was it Leon? It might have been Leon, actually. There was lots of signs of um, the Dalai Lama posters. There was Dalai Lama posters on them with three Gibraltar. Libre Gibraltar. Free Gibraltar. Because obviously Gibraltar is um, um, British. Although it's in Spain. Britain took over from the Dutch with the Treaty of Utrecht in the 18th century. So Gibraltar is a type of place where um, you either like it or you, you don't like it. You know, it's like Marmite. And yeah, I didn't like it as soon as I went into it. Yeah, he buys CBD in England. Yeah, CBD's legal. You can actually get cannabis from the doctor as well. So I've applied for a private prescription for cannabis. Cannabis saved my life, actually. Ah, uh, no problem, uh, Rose. Thanks very much for coming on my tour. Nice to have you all along. It's slightly different from Edinburgh, isn't it? I take it the signal's been not too bad as well. Um, yeah, you can buy CBD legally in England and Scotland. And if you are willing to... Well, you have to pay for your cannabis anyway, right? So you can apply for a private cannabis prescription. So if you suffer from, say, anxiety, um, epilepsy, lots of lots of different illnesses, but you have to give permission for the, the cannabis clinic to access your medical records. And um, then you have to have a private consultation with a doctor. That costs you £50. And then they, well, they have to assess your application through your medical records to see if um, they look at your medical records and then they see if they think you're going to be um, able to get a prescription. So then you book a private consultation and then the doctor gives you a prescription for cannabis. And because I've got asthma and COPD, I want to get um, cannabis edibles. So you can buy cannabis edibles. Um, and also I've got insomnia. I can't sleep without cannabis. Um, but yeah, so I had to access my medical records and give them permission to allow the cannabis clinic to, to look at them, to ascertain your application. And then, yeah, so that was when I found out that I'd, um, I've got some information about my childhood. That I knew I had a difficult childhood, okay, but I, didn't, I had a, an abusive father. And it turned out it was happening from the age of one. The age of one. And it stayed in my seat, it, 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 it ended um, when I was 10, but then when I was 11 I had a broken arm. It didn't end when I was 10, so I don't know what they were talking about. It lasted until I was 16, until I left home. So yeah, so I got some information that set me back. Um, a bit, to be honest, I can't, I can't, I'm struggling to digest it, because it's like the doctors knew I was getting abused and done nothing about it. I got sent to a child psychiatrist, I remember when I was um, maybe about 10 or 11 year old, I got sent to a child psychiatrist, um, but my dad came with me, like my dad was an alcoholic as well, and he like neglected me, but any time like the authorities were involved, like social workers or um, the schools, my dad would be there, because obviously he didn't want me to tell them what was going on, so never, I couldn't tell anyone what was going on. And then I got a social worker who became friends with my dad. Oh, here's this bloody machine back again. Are you trying to follow me because I've got a gimbal, buddy? This is the new ambulance of uh, Edinburgh here. Bloody road sweeper. I mean, take a siesta. <laughs> RSO. Yeah, that's what I want. Rick's, uh, Rick's Steam's oil. Well, well, that's four o'clock, everyone. Where's my son? 
¿Dónde está, man, mi niño? Jimmy. Where is Jimmy? I'll see you in the cathedral at four o'clock, he says. <laughs> what a laddie. Aye, so I've been pretty, I've been pretty um, depressed the last wee while, but I'm all right, you know. As I say, life goes on, doesn't it? So I'm just trying to focus on them, having a good time on my tour and spending time with my son and seeing what happens going forward, eh? Lovely cathedral, but as I say, watch out tomorrow. I might try and do a quick tour tomorrow of it. Um, depending on what time I can drag my lazy son's arse out of bed, you know, in the morning. He's not the best at getting up, he's just split with his girlfriend, actually. Um, because he couldn't get up in the mornings. <laughs> uh, his girlfriend got that pissed off with him, they split up over him not being able to get up in the morning, so he's been like that since he was 13. Um, so, yeah, so he's not the best at getting up in the morning. I said to him, you have to get up at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, son. So, remember I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to stay in the albergs? Well, I told my son, you're going to the albergs. You are not sharing my accommodation with me every night. I, I let him stay in my room last night and tonight. But after that, he's going to go to the alberg on his own. <laughs> I'm not doing it, man. <laughs> I'm not spending um, uh, nights with him. He's just so messy, you know. And... Uh, it was so funny, we went to the shops last night, we went for dinner when we arrived and got some Indian food in Spain, you know, and uh, Jimmy went for a walk to try and find a river, and when I got up this morning there was a can of beer on the, on the, you know, on the, on the unit thing, and it turned out it was non-alcohol beer, Jamie, Jamie thought it said sin filter, he liked unfiltered beer, <laughs> it turned out there was no alcohol in it. So my son, my daft son, bought a can of no alcohol beer, thinking it was, and he's sitting there drinking it, trying to get drunk, you know. <laughs> and he, he is. So yeah, he's, um, he's hard work, shall we say, my son. <laughs> hey, Polly B. Cheryl married her. Oh, no, that's the new work, Cheryl, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that, Bonnie. Your stepfather's a drunken, violent, psychotic bastard, but I... Uh, ah, that's what I like. They're good at hiding it, eh, these people. They're good at hiding it. Um, yeah. Oh, my poor mum as well, you know, my mum. My mum um, was getting abused as well, and um, she she used to run away. I had, I had two sisters, luckily I never touched my two sisters, you know. And um, but yeah, me and my mum used to run away to England to, see her, to stay with her family, but my mum always went back. And I said to my mum years later, I said, why did you stay with him, mum? She says, I done it for the, the children. I says, it was the worst thing you could have done, staying with him. You know, but it was different times back in these days, you know. I don't think ladies, I think ladies had to get permission from their men to have a bank account in 1974 in this godforsaken country. Um, and you could legally rape your wife. You, you could legally, there was no law against raping your wife as well until my back in my lifetime, you know, 1960s or something like that. Very misogynistic society we we live in sometimes, isn't it, ladies and everyone? <laughs> so as you can see, it's very quiet now. It's this yesterday time I should have remembered. But anyway, I'm going to head off and try and find my son, everyone. So thank you very much for coming on my tour today. As I say, I'm going to try and schedule some tours. I'll be, um, let me do some Facebook Live. If I'm walking through somewhere, and uh, I can do a Facebook Live tour, I'll do a Facebook Live tour as well. So watch this space, I'll try and do a couple of tours every day, see how we're getting on, you know, depends if it's getting some nice countryside or um, whatever I can see. It looks quite nice, I'll do some impromptu tours as well. So thank you very much, oh look at them all up here, <laughs> look at them all over, look it must be scary with the birds, you can't see it. There's a little owl up there, on the, balc on the Juliet balcony. Romeo, Romeo, where for art thou? <laughs> I don't see the point of the balconies, eh? Yeah, I think I would, be, I would be frustrated if I had a house with a balcony as narrow as that, you know? If I've got a house with a balcony, I want a balcony. <laughs> I think, well, he's now got data, actually. Yeah, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, everyone, if you're not already subscribing, if you could please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the like button, like, like button. And if you want to leave a tip or a donation, you can do so on my pay, buy me a coffee or PayPal, okay? So yeah, so as I say, I'll try and do a tour tomorrow. Wish me luck on that one. 
you see inside it here. Oh, this is the statue, see here? The statue here is that King Carlos III and his wife. There, inside marble. 15th century, I think it is. Yeah, some of the church was um, 14th and 15th century, but the facade was like 1799. It's, the interior is French Gothic. Very nice, very ornate. Well, I, was, I wasn't too impressed with the stained glass windows, to be honest. Yeah, I've seen better stained glass windows. Anyway, but yeah, thanks very much for coming on my tour, everyone. And hopefully I'll see some of you over the course of the next coming two weeks, okay? Have a fantastic Sunday. What's left of it, everyone? And have a great day. Hi, Tish, how you doing? Take care, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Oh, how did I end this tour? Oh, there we go. Hasta mañana! <laughs> see you tomorrow in Spanish.